touch it. Bloodborne pathogens. Great turns up and sing it again. Bloodborne pathogens. If it's wet, don't touch it. Medea turned around to see what she could see. Little did she know Don moved the TV. Boom! Pow! The lights went out. She was hurt. There ain't no doubt. The hole in her head was squirting out some blood. It was going and flowing like a darn dark flood. Hey ho, what should we do? Here comes J-O-Y coming to the rescue with her gloves in her pockets and her pockets in her pants. She's about to do the bloodborne pathogens dance. Let it go. Uh, 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 uh. Bloodborne pathogens. Don't touch it! Today we're discussing bloodborne pathogens, and this is annual training provided by the Galveston ISD Nursing Department. What you need to know you need to know the risks of exposure, how to respond to a risk situation, and how to take precautions. We're also going to teach you about the consequences of not following the plan. This is required by the state. It was passed in 1999 and if you look at chapter 96 of the Texas Department of Health you'll see that. I've also listed, if you have questions, our two nurses, Dolores Penrice and Guadalupe Martinez. In a public school, we work with a lot of amazing, amazingly diverse people. They bring lots of invaluable experience. But diversity also means exposure. And we're exposed to both risks and rewards. The risks are grave. If you're exposed to someone that is suffering from a bloodborne pathogen like HIV or hepatitis C, this can affect your life forever. Blood is an amazing life-giving substance, but it can also be life-threatening if you're exposed to bad blood. So remember, these training classes are designed to help you. There's also a district exposure plan. Uh, you can use PPE to help you lower the risk, and, and you can gain an understanding of how bloodborne pathogens affect everyone. Knowledge is power. A bloodborne pathogen is a very small organism you can't see that's carried in the blood and causes disease. Bloodborne pathogens travel when blood is uh, passed from one person to another or body fluid. In the workplace, the diseases we're most concerned with are hepatitis B, hepatitis C, and the human immunodeficiency virus, HIV. Exposure. When your skin is broken, you can be exposed to bloodborne pathogens. Our skin is amazingly strong, so this is rare. But when you have an open sore, a cut, a scrape, acne, or any sort of damaged skin, the risk is increased. Bloodborne pathogens can also be transmitted through eyes, nose, mouth, other soft tissue like private parts. An exposure example might be you're breaking up a fight and somebody starts bleeding and then there's a mess or you're cut or they're cut. One of the risks is hepatitis B. This is if there were such a thing as a good hepatitis this would be the one because there is a vaccination. Now this one uh, infects the liver just like the other one but 50 percent of the people have no symptoms that have this. So if you do have symptoms it's kind of like the flu. It can include uh, jaundice or yellowing of the skin or eyes and fatigue, you know, not hungry, loss of appetite, abdominal pain, and maybe even vomiting. Most people that suffer from this recover and only 10% 10 10 might retain the disease for life and in those cases it can cause liver cancer, failure, and even death. But the hepatitis B virus is very durable. Um, the bad thing is it can survive in dried blood for seven days, even longer. 
There's a vaccine. If you're in a high-risk uh, job position, the district will provide you with a vaccine. Hep C is the more serious of the two types of hepatitis virus. This one is spread by contact um, through ex ex exposure to blood or uh, sexually transmitted. It's not easily transmitted. The virus can also be spread with tattoos or drug use, um, needles. People who get Hep C carry it for the rest of their lives. There's no cure. Um, and they will all have some type of liver damage. But some people uh, will even develop liver failure and need a transplant. Symptoms are similar to Hep B. The one that most people do know about is HIV. This pathogen uh, causes the autoimmune deficiency syndrome or AIDS and this is passed from one person to another through blood to blood or sexual contact. We're more worried about blood to blood. Hopefully there is no sexual contact happening in school. It attacks a person's immune system and it causes it to break down slowly and the infected person becomes ill when his or her immune system loses its ability to fight. The white blood cells are lowered. So some infected people go on to develop full-blown AIDS and that can be fatal. While treatment is improving, um, a life with HIV or AIDS would be very inconvenient and expensive and there is no cure. There's no vaccine. The good news is that it does not survive outside of the body very well at all. We're going to reduce your risk. How? Well, we're going to treat everybody like they're infected with HIV. And that sounds terrible, but it's just having respect for these pathogens because they're serious. So don't be paranoid, but treat everyone as if they might be infected. Good morning, Coach Graham. I really like your glasses. Good morning, Nurse Ratchet. Thank you. They are the Sachi brand. What brings you here today? Your athletes are prone to frequent cuts and injuries, and I'm worried about you and the students being exposed to bloodborne pathogens. How do you react when a student is cut and the blood needs to be cleaned up? I clean up the mess with a wash rag and then rinse it out for reuse. I never waste anything. I believe in recycling. Reusing a wash rag to clean up bodily fluids is both nasty and dangerous. You down with PPE? Yeah, you know me. You down with PPE? Yeah, you know me. You down with PPE? Yeah, you know me. Who's down with PPE? -E? Every last homie. PPE or gloves. We have gloves in our uh, custodial uh, supply closets and the nurse has gloves. Only clean up a blood spill or a bodily fluid spill if you have the gloves to do it. Now, when taking the gloves off, you have to do so carefully. We're going to talk about that. And then never reuse gloves. That's disgusting. Throw them away. They're cheap. Now, when you remove these contaminated gloves, say you got blood all over the gloves. While both hands are gloved, you're going to carefully peel one glove off from the wrist to the fingers, then hold it in the gloved hand, and with the exposed hand, peel the second glove off in the same way. Promptly throw them away and never touch the outside of a glove with your bare skin because your skin absorbs any type of uh, mucus. Proper glove removal. Follow these steps to prevent the spread of pathogens. Pinch the first glove at the wrist and pull down, touching only the outside of the glove. Ball up the removed glove in the palm of your gloved hand. Slide an ungloved finger inside the other glove, touching only the inside with your ungloved finger. Peel the second glove off inside out, trapping it in your palm. Discard the balled up gloves in the proper receptacle. Clean your hands with soap and water or alcohol-based cleaner. Always wash your hands with soap and running water afterwards. Hand washing Wash your hands well. This reduces the risk better than anything. Wash your hands with soap. Rub them together. 
Spend the time doing it. Don't do it quickly. 10 to 15 seconds. Uh, rinse with uh, water and then dry with a clean paper towel and discard it. Um, antimicrobial soaps are overused. Only use them when necessary because they remove your skin's protective defenses. Let's use common sense. If you're likely to be exposed to blood or other potentially infectious materials, don't eat, drink, or apply cosmetics or lip balm in these areas. Um, you know, if you're working with blood and sweat and body fluids all day, don't take your contacts in and out for no reason. Um, food and beverages are not to be kept in refrigerators where blood is stored. Basically common sense. Um, all procedures are conducted in a man manner that would minimize splashing, spraying, splattering, and generation of droplets of blood and other infectious materials. I don't foresee a situation where you're going to be splashing blood around in your classroom, hopefully. Clean it all up with the procedures listed here. Good housekeeping. Keep your rooms clean. Keep your clothes clean. Keep your body clean. Have gloves available. Don't have kids picking up broken glass. Other regulated wastes should be placed in and sealed in garbage bags. Make sure others aren't exposed to it. If you're ever exposed, don't panic. We're all exposed at some point. See your campus nurse. Now wash your skin with soap and water as soon as you can. And if they cover your, or, or the material enters your eyes, you can flush your eyes with large amounts of water for 15 minutes. We have eye wash stations in our science labs. Always report the exposure to the campus nurse or principal as soon as possible. And then follow the management for post-exposure in this plan. Exposure probably won't lead to infection. So don't freak out. Summary. Remember to treat all blood and body fluids as if they are infected with pathogens. We're going to use gloves anytime we handle body fluids. Period. We're going to disinfect the spill area with the appropriate germicidal agent. Mr. Mitchell has the approved cleaning agents in his supply. And then by following these guidelines, you can deal with blood safely while treating the people that need it with compassion. In order to get credit for this, in a second post, I'm going to have a downloadable Q chart. This is a chart that helps you formulate a question. You can use it with your students. Write your name on the chart and then print it and turn it into me for your attendance credit. Questions will be addressed at the next faculty meeting. Here is your launch. Remembering that your time is limited. Sorry to be so dramatic, but it's quite true. Your time is limited, so don't waste it living someone else's life. Don't be trapped by dogma, which is living with the results of other people's thinking. Don't let the noise of others' opinions drown out your own inner voice. And most important, have the courage to follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you truly want to become. Everything else is secondary.